Hello everyone, welcome back. As we have already done one introductory video on design patterns, in this video we will cover singleton design pattern in detail. We will see different approaches using which we can implement the singleton design pattern with examples. Before we start, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and if you like watching the tutorial videos, please don't forget to leave a like or comment. Now without any further delay, let's start. So what is a singleton design pattern? Singleton pattern comes under the category of creational design patterns which are concerned with the object creation. Singleton pattern restricts the instantiation of a class and ensures that only one instance of the class exists in the JVM. It must provide a global access point to get the instance of the class. It is used for mainly logging, driver objects, caching and thread pool like services. Singleton design pattern is also used in other design patterns like abstract factory pattern, builder pattern and prototype pattern etc. Now let's see how to implement the design pattern. To implement a singleton pattern, we have different approaches but all of them have some common concepts like it should have a private constructor to restrict the instantiation of class from other classes. It should have a private static variable of the same class that is the only instance of that class. It should have a public static method that returns the instance of that class. This is the global access point to outer world to get the instance of that singleton class which we are implementing. Now let's see the different approaches of singleton pattern implementation. We have eager, static block and lazy initializations. In addition to that we also have thread safe singleton, uh, build pew singleton implementation and singleton implementation using enums. Now let's start with eager initialization. In eager initialization, the instance of singleton class is created at the time of class loading itself. This is the easiest method to create a singleton class, but it has few drawbacks. That means the instance is created even though the client application might not be requiring it that time. So now let's see the implementation of uh, eager initialization singleton class. So here we have this class singleton eager. It is having one static variable of the same type singleton eager and, and there itself we can see we are uh, initializing it to new singleton eager and assigning it to the memory as well. And then we have its private constructor so that the other classes will not be able to instantiate it. And in the end we have another static method which is a global point of contact for the outer classes to get the instance of this class. So this will make sure only a single instance is created for this class. Few important notes regarding this approach. If your singleton class is not using a lot of resources, this is the approach to use. But in most of the scenarios, singleton classes are created on resources such as file system, database or connections etc. We should avoid the instantiation until unless client calls the get instance method. Also, this does not provide any option for exception handling as well. Now let's see the static block initialization. The static block initialization implementation is almost similar to the eager except that the instance of class is created in a static block. So what is the difference here? The difference is it will give us an option to do the exception handling as well. Both eager and static block initialization creates the instance before even it is being required. Now let's see the implementation of static class initialization as well. So here similarly we have this class singleton static block. It is having a static variable of the same class but here we are not uh, using the new keyword to assign it a value as well. Then we have a private uh, constructor for the same. And you can see we have a static block and inside the static block what we are doing we are assigning the value to the instance variable whose name is instance. And in the end we have that global access point which is that static function to return that particular instance. So the only difference between static block and uh, eager initialization is we can do some exception handling in case of static block which is not uh, applicable in case of eager in initialization. 
Next is lazy initialization. This approach will create the instance of singleton class only when it is required, not like the eager or static initialization. Now let's try to understand it by one example. So here again, similarly, we have this class singleton lazy and it is having one static instance variable. And then we have a private constructor again. And in our global access point method, which is a static method, what we are doing, we are checking if the instance is null, that means no instance is created, then create an instance and return it. This implementation works fine in case of single threaded environment. But when it comes to multi-threaded systems, it can cause issues if multiple threads are inside the if condition at the same time. This will destroy the singleton pattern and both threads will get the different instances of the singleton class. Now to overcome the drawback of previous implementation approach in the multi-threaded applications, we can create a thread safe singleton class to make the global access method synchronized so that only one thread can execute this method at a time. So here is the implementation of thread safe initialization of singleton class. So here what we have done, the global access method is synchronized so that if one thread uh, gets lock of this method, then the other thread will not be able to go inside this method. And by the time uh, first thread is completing this method, the instance is already created. So any thread which is coming inside this method after the first thread, they will simply get the value of instance which was already created by the first thread. This implementation works fine and provides thread safety, but it reduces the performance because of the cost associated with synchronized method. So to avoid the extra overhead every time, we can implement the double checked locking principle. In this approach, the synchronized block is used inside if condition with an additional tech check to ensure that only one instance of singleton class is created. So here is the code changes required in the global access method to provide the double check locking implementation. So what we are doing, the method is not synchronized now, but we are using a synchronized block inside the method. And after that, again, we are checking if the instance is null, then it will create a new instance and return that value. So in this case, uh, the other threads can also enter into the method as well and there will not be any much blocking. So it will improve the performance of the application as well. Next is build pew implementation. In this approach to create a singleton class, it is using an inner static helper class. It does not require synchronization at all. Here is the implementation of build pew initializations of singleton class. Here private inner static class that contains the instance of the singleton class when a singleton class is loaded, the helper class is not loaded into the memory. And only when someone calls the get instance method, the class gets loaded and created the singleton class instance. This is the most widely used approach for singleton classes as it does not require any synchronization at all. So there is no overhead of synchronization as well. Now let's move to the last approach that we will see in this tutorial, which is using enums. Enums are also used to implement singleton design pattern and as Java ensures that enum value is instantiated only once in a JVM, since Java enum values are globally accessible, so is the singleton. The drawback is that enum type is somewhat inflexible. For example, it does not allow lazy initialization. So it will always be an eager initialization. So the object will be created when the class or enum is getting loaded itself. So here is the implementation of singleton class using enums. With this, we have completed the main approaches to implement singleton design pattern. Now we know nothing is perfect in the world and design patterns are no exception. So in the next video, we will see what are the challenges with singleton design patterns and how to overcome the same. So if you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like or comment and also share it as much as possible. Till then, keep learning and thanks for watching.